I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I filled up my water from my bathroom. Yeah. And it does taste weird upstairs. Because oh. I think it's because of the the um the plastic tubes are different or less used, maybe. Gotcha. Okay. So while we were in between episodes, the mail came, and mm-hmm. I got a case of chow mein. Why did you get a case of chow mein? <laughs> <laughs> because I For like the chow mein. He's got a uh, Sapro Ichiban yep. box, 24-pack? Yeah, man. Can I see there? Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of sodium, Brandon. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's it's like my favorite um, of the instant noodles at the moment. The chow mein, the the ichiban, the uh, yeah the the chow mein, and uh, it's just fast. It's easy to cook, and every once in a while I feel lazy, and uh, it's a good thing to throw. So on. yeah, I started painting Malfo again. Oh right on. Yeah, Hell yeah I, I do this. I do this thing once a year. I'll like try to finish painting all the Malfo minis I've purchased over the years. Yeah. Uh, because I have way too many. Mm-hmm. So, like, once a year, I'll hit this point where I'm like, well, maybe I should try finish pa- finishing painting these. Yeah. So, I'm currently working on the starter set in terms of painting right now. Okay, which starter? Is is this the same? Um, so, I got Pandora. And mm-hmm. what, what, which one did you get? You didn't have the, uh, the Rat Boy. Uh, it was... I got... I got Kirai, but I gotcha. finished my Kirai. Is Kirai, my Kirai the Rats? No, Kirai is the lady who does Spirit Summon. Gotcha, okay. Uh, Nick got the... Nick got the got Rat Hamlin. Army. He got yeah, Hamlin. That's, yeah. I think that's Hamlin. Yeah, yeah, and you're, you're 100%, 100% right, because Hamlin was the Pied Piper, I believe. It was yeah, the Pied, Pied Piper. Piper of Hamlin. Um, yeah. yeah, and I got Pandora, and I got Teddy, which is the great alt. Also, Hamlin just threw me back to when we went to the Renaissance Fair and got to see uh, uh, Cirque du Sewer, which was fantastic. Cirque du Sewer was great. It was so good. It was a phenomenal experience. For for Um, the listeners, at the Renaissance Fair, there is a lady who has trained cats, and it's so good. She's got trained rats. She's got trained cats. The rats do obstacle courses. She walks a tightrope, and she has was it a, was it an actual like piccolo type of pied piper? There's like they they do tricks. It's good yeah. stuff, man. I saw it twice. It was it was good both times. Yeah, it was really good both times. It was very funny. Oh yeah, extremely self deprecating humor. Ah, oh, I appreciate that though. I like self deprecating humor. That's fair. At the very least, you're not punching down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, guitar guy there was fun. She, she'd make fun of him or what have you. The cats were good. The cats are phenomenal. <laughs> Packy Meow. Yeah. Packy Meow. The week that we're recording this, I've been off for the whole week. And I'm tired of being <laughs> off in a weird way. But I'm not. So, like, I'm not as on top of my A game, if that makes sense. Gotcha. When I have, when I have time to sit, I just kind of... Uh, turn into nothing <laughs> it's weird I, I don't know um but i guess we should start this episode this week is oh yes john and brandon <laughs> i like um it. we investigate claims of the paranormal and supernatural and then we don't tell you about it and we talk about cryptids and set <laughs> because we don't care we don't want you to know these things. It's our job to keep it a secret. It is a jo- it, it is our job to keep credible claims of the supernatural and paranormal secret. <laughs> Fake stuff we'll tell you about all day. All day, man. Like, did you hear? 
there was a uh, there's a new lake monster that has Sasquatch feet. I did hear about that. You know, I heard that the Museum of Natural Sciences investigated and found that it was actually legitimate. They found several living species in, the, in a population large enough to breed. Yeah, they have good food sources. Yeah, it's a bunch of pixie sticks, though. So <laughs> if pixie sticks go, these creatures go. So remember that, people. That's right. You have to throw your pixie sticks into the lakes, really. It's the only way that we'll keep these rare beasts alive. So what's their name again? I, f- I forgot it. It's like... Uh, Dale Osis Stephalomidagon. Yeah, that sounds right. Yep, Dale Osis Stephalomidagon is the scientific name for these. Mm. Yeah, meaning, uh, meaning, uh, 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 John Stamos. Yes, John Stamos. <laughs> That's what it translates to. Um. Anyway, I'm John. I'm Brandon. Uh, and this is actually Cryptopedia. So this week's cryptid. Yeah. Uh, it was first sighted in 1964. Okay. Its last sighting was in 2014, but I can assure you 2014. it's 2014. Okay. Uh, its taxonomy is humanoid, and its region is West Virginia. Oh, another Virginian. Okay. Uh-huh. I, I actually found out about this cryptid last week. Okay. Man, I actually found out about this cryptid from last week. Not yawning. Huh. All right. So the <sighs> what year? When? When was Sheep Squatch again? What? What year was that one? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, 1994. 1994. So this this is this is way prior. Um... I'll give you another hint. This monster is. Definitely in Fallout 76. That I haven't played that game yet. You know, Let's Go came out, and I got up to Self Go Tower, and mm-hmm. it's not until after I complete that that I'll play Red Dead and Vault 76. But 1964 West Virginia, was, that was a presidential election, is Lyndon B. Johnson. So let me think. We have West Virginia. We have Lyndon B. Johnson. We have cryptids. Mm-hmm. We have Fallout Vault 76. Is this... I'm just gonna... Uh, this is a hard one. What What was the... Uh, is this Big Hoot? I'm gonna say this is Big Hoot. Because that's like a... Uh, no, you got it wrong. No? Uh, no. I did mention Big Hoot on the last episode, but that's not this one. That's the only reason why I thought. Because it's the same region. I didn't know the time period. Okay, let me uh, let me send you the document. It is the Grafton monster. The Grafton, I've heard, of, I know, th- I know the name, but nothing else. Like just saying Grafton monster, I went, oh yeah, Grafton monster, but I, I can't you know, tell you what it actually is. So this is weird. The story I'm about to tell you, um, I was scared as I'm reading it that there was absolutely not enough to make an episode about this. <laughs> That's to be fair. That's every week for for us. <laughs> it really is. People, the more you read about cryptids, the more you realize that cryptids are just like three people saying, I saw a thing. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me yeah. three. And then there's hundreds of websites that just circularly reference the same three original sources. Actually, this one, literally every website, like feeds back into Kurt McCoy's white things. Oh, really? Which I read last week. Like, That's fantastic. Every reference. That's a good get. The, the problem is, the yeah. problem, the reason that that's the only source mm-hmm. is because the paper hasn't been digitized. Oh, like the newspaper. Yeah. And the the source that the core meat and potatoes of the story came from yeah. is something that you have to be on site at the, at, I'll get into it later, but like, there's an author, uh, Gray Barker, yeah. who wrote a bunch of books on UFOs. Okay. He's got a private collection, like, you know, a posthumous type of collection. And you have to be on site to read it. Oh, man. So all the sources are from people who have read it. So yeah. 
because I'm not driving to West Virginia for a single episode of this podcast, <laughs> uh, you're going to hear the secondary source. And I just want to I want to couch that before we continue. Yeah, I'm so. looking at the very first thing that shows up in your copy is mm-hmm. the outline. And it is a fantastic picture. This should be the Instagram <laughs> post. It might be. This is so good. It's it looks like Shrek with um the head of a human. Like a, a bearded bald man. It basically with, is. I can't tell if there's a mouth. I'll say without a mouth. There might be a mouth. It's all green with the exception of a single rose, which I appreciate. I do like things that are all monotone. And then there's one item of color in it, whether it's, like, all blue with one red thing or whatever. I should also point out, it's got, like, a nice gradient effect that they're doing. Like, it's a yeah. yellow green. Oh, yeah, um, totally. There's, like, a weird amount of artistry in this crudely drawn image. Um, but that's not even a good description of what the creature looks like. No. But before we get into that, um, I do want to go over white things a little again. Okay. Because someone might not have heard episode 10. If they haven't heard episode 10, they don't know what a white thing is. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, totally. So... White things are a storytelling motif in West Virginia. Uh, Stories date back to Cherokee oral tradition, and uh, they first make a modern appearance in the Telltale Lilac Bush by Dr. Ruth Ann Music. Um, Generally, there's a few common motifs amongst them. They are mostly white. Really? Yeah. What? It's weird. Get out of here. Sometimes they can be muddy, but they're white. Um (laughs) A lot of the times they scream like either a child or a woman. And they are capable of moving as a quadruped or biped. Those are like the three key things that exist in all these stories. Or an octoped. Yeah, in that one case there was an octoped. There was a spider. There was a spider wolf. Or a wingeded ped. I don't know if moth... Oh, well, Big Hoot does count as a white thing, I guess. Yeah. So... But um, most of my source for this week's episode comes from, as I said before, Kurt McCoy's collection of stories, White Things, West Virginia's Weird White Monsters. It's a very good book. I'd recommend reading it. I tore through that book in, like, no time flat. Um, and I'm or, uh, clearly I'm using it as a, second, a source for an episode two weeks after the first episode that I used it as a source. So there's a, <laughs> there's a fair amount of detail in that book. Now, uh, the Grafton monster in question, it's a little bit different, but it definitely fits in the... It definitely can be classified as a white thing, just due to the the core of its story um, and core of its description. But it doesn't have, like, all of the... It doesn't check all the boxes. Does it... So there's two images. There's one, the first one, which is, like, a a Shrek with a human head, and the other one is from Fallout, which, if you haven't played Fallout yet... The best way I could describe it is the flood from Halo 2. It looks sort of like that a little bit. Which yep. one is more which one more closely fits the secondary uh description? Based on what I've heard and based on what I read, uh the second one is probably closer to the correct description. No shit. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, no poop. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't care about all cursing. <laughs> I was just trying to 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 reduce my f bombs <laughs> because so fun story about John. John in high school was afraid to curse, oh, and then yeah. a, flip, a switch got flipped in John, and he stopped caring about cursing altogether. Yeah, I remember that. It was. I think. I think I can trace it back to a single event where I got so mad I started cursing someone out. And then the floodgates were opened. <laughs> and the floodgates were opened. All I... it took was, yeah? was me getting super angry once. <laughs> I uh, I reserve my cursing. So if I typically don't curse around people unless I'm comfortable around them enough to know their opinions on cursing. That's fair. And uh, once I know that, then I'll go. I'll go into... I'll either ease into it, like I'll sprinkle it in to to test the waters, and then I'll go in because I'm like a sailor, really. Um, and and then I'll go into it, and um, and that's mostly because I'm I'm too socially awkward to really just be myself. I have to like test the waters of a person, and then I go, <laughs> okay, now I can be Brandon. And um, at work, 
man. <laughs> there are people who I don't interact with a lot, and then like we'll hang out for like like in the cafeteria break time, and then I'll realize like, oh, okay, this person's pretty cool, and then I'll just be like, switch from testing the waters to talking about video games and, and cursing a lot, and you can, and there have been people. Like, you can see it on their face, and they go, what? And you're like, what? And they go, I've never heard you curse before. And they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've had two people go, I have I didn't know, like, I didn't think you cursed. And I was like, oh, no, I just don't unless, you know, because if you don't know the person, I don't want to give them a negative opinion of me unless I know that they're cool with it. Brandon, you are, like, the definition of social awkwardness. <laughs> Like what was it? One time you were you were telling me a story about like interactions with an intern. Oh yeah, <laughs> and like you were oh I can't remember the whole story, but basically like they were afraid to inter- to t- talk to you about something, and then you were like I, I don't know, but your your whole <laughs> there was like this weird Seinfeld esque uh, lack of communication going on due to double oh, yeah. social awkwardness. They they were. They, uh, I'm having a hard time remembering. It was recent. I, 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 I'm just a little foggy. But we had an intern, and they were they were an intern. They were new. It was their first job. They're in engineering, and they were they were too awkward to communicate well and approach me, and I was too awkward really to like distribute work. Like, oh yeah. So I was trying to be nice and like I was awkward, but I was like, they're an intern. I've got to give them work and make sure that they, when they do stuff, they're at least approaching it from the right angle. Mm-hmm. But they were like triple my awkwardness, where I was being awkward. Here's how you do things and prevent presenting work to them in a digestible way. But mm-hmm. they would just seem very sad. Like anything like, hey, I'm going to use their fake name, but I'll be like, Hey Jennifer, so we're going to. Here's how you would design this product. I'll give you this outline of how to mm-hmm. do it. Here's an old drawing from the 1950s. What we'd like you to do is do it back in in CAD, so we have a 3D model. Here's yeah. your primary tools that you'll be using. If you have any questions, come back to me. But they're like shying away and have puppy dog eyes, and, mm-hmm. and you're like, and, and my head like, oh no, oh no, I'm hurting them. So then, like, I start shying away as well. So then we've got these two. We're both just like, shy. oh man. And then, then the entirety of the planet is in between you two as you shy away from one another. Yeah, yeah. They and I've got a I've got a Petco um, membership now because yeah. I thought I thought she was the girl behind the counter was asking for my number and not. <laughs> If I wanted to sign up for a membership. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's so, the most stereotypical you thing you've ever told me. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm dead. So now I just sort of get get their 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 emails from time to time <laughs> saying, hey, twenty oh. percent off this. <laughs> oh i'm i've died that was my death oh okay i, I need i need to go into the story so i can come back to life oh, okay so the grafton monster uh-huh there's an appalachian town named grafton west virginia it's a small town uh clocking in with a population around five thousand to six thousand people depending on the year Okay, um, so it's a small, one... small to moderate. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. At one point, it was like a seat of luxury because all the the, the railroads came to meet there. Yeah. Uh, so railroad barons, mine owners, all that stuff. Nineteenth century, it was just packed. Okay. With rich people. Since then, you know, the rich people have left. Like the richest people. They've cut up, cut the mansions down into apartments and stuff yeah. like that. So it's it's like one of those you know you know the type of town the like rich in history type towns. Yeah, they're proud of their their heritage. They're proud of their town. One of those types. Of it used to smell like mint julep, like a lot. Yeah, 
It might still smell like mint julep, <laughs> but we, I don't know. I've never been there. Uh, in the 1960s, however, it got a monster to call its very own. Now, some may argue that certain railroad barons were monsters already, <laughs> and mine owners, but, you know, we're talking like a cryptid monster. So, cut to June 16th, 1964. Okay. Although... One source I found said 1965. Uh, I think that was in the Lauren Col- Coleman book. Okay. Um, however, the way the story rolls out, I think 1964 is the correct time. Um, I did do some verification to see, and there were certain events that happened that tie into this story that happened in 1964, which makes me think 1964 is the correct time. Okay. Yeah. So... Even though I don't have the primary sources, I did look. I did do like a meta analysis of secondary sources mm-hmm. to say that it's most likely 1964. Okay, cool. So a newspaperman, Robert Crockrell, was traveling on Riverside Drive, which is a road that uh, travels alongside the Tigart River, which is a river that runs through the town. Okay. Um, it was late, 11 p.m., uh, 1964. He was on his way home from work. Uh, According to reports, he was traveling home at 50 miles per hour on a road when he sees... Yes, on a road. (laughs) Let me... Let me... Let me take that from the top. Well, I I was thinking... Here... here, my, my, My nodding was to the 50 miles an hour, right? Because this is one of the first cases where someone's driving a real person's speed... And they yes. see something because in Sheep Squatch, I think um, they said they're driving like 10 miles an hour or one of our yeah. best episodes. Someone's driving 10. I said, no, nobody drives at 10 miles an hour, oh. even if there's deer. No one drives like that. Even the uh, the the Dover Demon, I think they might have been driving like exceptionally 30. slowly. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was a lie. Yeah. Um, at the very least, he's being honest. In the story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. As he's driving, he's taking a turn, and he sees a massive creature between the road and the river. Okay. So, according to his description, it was between seven and nine feet, approximately four feet wide. It had white seal skin and no visible head. Seal skin? So, like, smooth is what he's saying. Is smooth smooth skin, yeah. Okay. So, kind of like a seal will have extremely smooth skin so it can move through the water quickly. Gotcha. Okay. Um... It did not react to his high beams. However, Robert was absolutely convinced that it was a living creature. Okay. He said that he was not tired or exhausted, nor was he under any emotional stress. Okay. Uh, At the time of sighting or post sighting? Like, did he take it in stride or is he saying that he was basically just nor at the time he saw this, he was operating at just normal levels. So, this came from a correspondence, like, a month later. Okay. Um, But he did kind of peel away when he saw it. Like, he drove faster away from it. Gotcha. That makes sense. I do that, too. I don't blame him. No, no, I don't blame him either. Yeah. So, um, he returns to the site afterwards with... Now, this is where stories differ. Lauren Coleman's report account says that police... Uh, went with him. Another account says it was his friends Jerry Morse and Jim Mouse. Gotcha. Um, okay. Alternatively, they could be cops, but I couldn't find any information on their work status. Okay. So, in classic roadside monster sighting tradition, uh, once they return, the creature's gone. Gotcha. So, th- But they did find a fair amount of the brush was mashed down leading to the river. Oh, nice. Okay, so there's physical evidence at this point that something, whether whatever it was, we don't know, but something was there. Yes, but okay. there was no evidence of the creature itself. No footprints, no fur, no nothing. Gotcha. Okay. But reports say that they did hear a low whistling coming from the direction of the, of the river. Oh, it's a whistling meanie. So it almost sounds like like the description that I in the book basically says. Maybe if it, maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a blowhole. 
a or something like that. A blowhole? Like a blowhole. Like a blowhole. Oh! Like, like, like a porpoise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the... Do I, I don't whistle? believe that. Yeah, they do. Oh, shoot. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, if you if you ever go to like an aquarium, listen to the, the dolphins or any other uh, mammals, they... Because they, the... The aperture sometimes isn't fully open; it's just partially open. You'll hear like a yeah. light, a low whistle. Okay, so that's yeah. how you know if they're they're screaming for help. You can always assume they're screaming for help. Okay. Yeah. Watch Blackfish. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm already anti that stuff. I don't. I don't that's need to fair. be anti that stuff and then sad. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> So Cockrell was then quoted in a correspondence to Gray Barker, the guy I talked about before. He's an American okay. writer who's known for books on UFOs, basically. First okay. time I've heard of him, actually. Yeah. Uh, but apparently, he has like this huge collection of like UFO literature. Oh, cool! So, All right, prolific. Um. Yeah. So Cockrell says, at this point, I would like to say that I am sure it was not a practical joke, nor a figment of my imagination. I'm not going to knock him too much, but everyone says that. <laughs> like, That's true. Everyone says, no, I, I saw it. I wasn't making it up. It wasn't something else. I definitely saw it. It wasn't something I imagined. That's every time anyone's asked about something they saw. That seems like the the blanket response. Yeah, that's it's it's kind of it's kind of like a pat response, so to speak. Yeah. This triggers off a monster hunting madness. Oh, I like where this is going. I like where this is going, man. Supposedly, Robert was not the one who talked about the knife. Okay. His friends, however, blabbed about it to everyone. Uh, those are good friends. Yeah, they 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 were like a like a a, a cheap water bottle, practically. You know, when yeah. you close it and it doesn't really. Uh -huh. It doesn't really close right, and it just leaks all over everything. Yeah. And then you're like, why do I have this water bottle? But then you keep using it because you don't feel like buying a new water bottle. <laughs> They're one of those. Yeah, which reminds me, but my my uh, my aftershave in the bathroom mm -hmm. has a tiny pinhole or something in it that I can't find. But there's a yep. very super slow leak. But my bathroom smells mm -hmm. so good all the time. It smells like a barbershop. It's good. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, there's worse things. I suppose there, 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 are, there are explicitly worse things. Worse things. I have yeah. had literally worse things happen in my bathroom, yeah. and I may have been responsible for some of them. <laughs> uh, so, as this this rumor starts to spread, who 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 grabs onto it? Teenagers. Oh, oh of it's course, teenagers. So, teenagers being teenagers, uh, descended upon Riverside Drive. In mass, they had oh. flashlights and mallets in hand to find. And them. mallets, and yes. mall. What are they going to do with a mallet? Well, let me let me send you a link. Uh, that's a documentary of what you do with a mallet. It's a oh no. <laughs> oh god. <clears throat> so let's say um. Oh god, what's the name of that show with the purple dog? Courage the Cowardly Dog. That's a Courage the Cowardly Dog clip. Oh, man. That's it. I'm getting me mallet. And I guess that's what you do with a mallet. <laughs> I, my assumption is my assumption is all of the uh, all the teenagers were like, ah, ah, I finally got a use for that mallet I got. <laughs> yeah. All it's right. Let me get my mallet. It's a nine foot tall, four foot wide creature. What are, mm -hmm. you, what are you gonna do with a mallet? One, that's assuming that y that your arm reach plus mallet is longer than the arm reach of this creature. That's true. Yeah. Also, it has no head, so where are you gonna hit it? Oh yeah. You gonna hit its foot? Whoa. I mean, you could smack it in the Johnson. If it has one. That's true. If it has. If it one. doesn't have a if it doesn't have a head, does it have a Johnson? Who who knows? No one knows. <laughs> so, um, cops were called. Okay. Uh, because anytime you get any number of teenagers together with weapons, 
in flashlights. You call probably the cops. should call the cops. Yeah, you call Just the police. Just in general, <laughs> like if you see more than five teenagers standing around and any of them has like a mallet, yeah, <laughs> probably call the cops. Yeah. It, it's it's yeah. worth it. Unless that's, you're at like a youth woodworking competition at night. Call the police. Call the cops. Yeah. <laughs> Even then, call the cops. Yeah. yeah. What are they doing when we're working at night? Yeah, it's dangerous, man. Chisels it are is dangerous. Sharp. Chisels are sharp. Yeah. Uh, no arrests were made. Which makes sense. I can see that, though. They, I can see them just showing up and saying, hey, everybody, go home. Yeah, it was pretty much what it was. Yeah. Um, so, Cockerell reported the events the next day in the Grafton Central. Central. Okay. Um, Unfortunately, as I said before, the article was not digitized. Uh, I can't okay. find any digital record of it anywhere. And because, once again, as I said in the as I said before, I don't feel like driving to West Virginia, <laughs> which is uh, fair. I don't have the exact contents of this article and reporting secondhand. Uh, the headline, however, was "Teenage Monster Hunting Party's Latest Activity on Grafton Sea." Okay. Uh, according to several sources, the editors of the Sentinel were not happy with the story in general. <laughs> uh, they weren't. They didn't like it. They thought it was uh, sensationalist. I would say so. Yeah. 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 Um, and but they published it because it's a current event. Okay. Right. Of the people who were present for the monster hunt, twenty. Claimed they saw the creature. That's a bigger party than I thought I saw. Uh, 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 I pictured in my head. Oh I, yeah, I wasn't picturing twenty. I was picturing uh, a group of. T- I was picturing maybe seven, maybe uh, seven with flashlights and mallets. If you're talking twenty, maybe saw it. How many were actually in the party? That's crazy. I saw thirty in one report, and up I saw a hundred. In Holy another. cow! Yeah, so there was a fair number of kids there. Wow. Yeah, cops definitely should have been called. Yeah. That's a lot of kids. That just, that's, just a, that's, the... not, that's not a monster hunting party. That's a mob of kids. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a child mob. That's a, yeah, that's the that scariest kind mob. of mob. Yeah. Teenagers scare the living shit out of you. Yeah. Oh yeah. To quote to quote the uh what song? Who sang that? I only know it because it was in a. It was in um, what was it? The the Halo music video. Yeah. Collab thing <laughs> with. Oh, what was the name of that that group that did the Halo music videos that was actually good? Uh, was it? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Hollywood Halo. Hollywood yeah, Halo. Hollywood Halo. That's yes. That was the clan. Yes. Oh man, I remember that. Yeah. Much better than Caution Studios. <laughs> wink, 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 wink. The teenagers, man, they're getting... Kids these days are getting out of control. Okay, so I was driving to get some chicken wings yesterday, as I do. Mm-hmm. It was raining because it was raining. It was 35 degrees. There were teenagers... I would stopped the car because they were in the middle of the road on hoverboards... In the rain and not moving for cars. And I was like, man, I don't... My my school taxes went up 2%. My tax... My pro... They, 2%. And these 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 little bastards are out there that on the segways not moving for cars. They should be inside. You know what they should be doing? They should be inside reading their textbooks like a normal kid. Because 2% on top of what I'm already... That's that's a lot of money, dude. That's, I gotta... I, I got a real question for you. Yeah. When you were in high school, were you reading your textbook inside? No, but that's beside the point. I wasn't. (sighs) Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I was actually reading my textbook, but there's, I think I'm not a normal kid. I think it should be legal to get a copy of your tax bill. And anytime there's a kid outdoors, you're allowed to roll it up and whack them. <laughs> All right, old man. Uh, oh boy. Um so anyway, 
one of the teens actually put forth a theory as to what Ooh, it is. Okay, I like this theory. What is it? Uh, their theory was that it was a paste, a, a, a paste, an escaped polar bear. In West Virginia. In West Virginia. Escaped because from it was, where? It was big, it was white, and it could swim. That was the only reason. Okay, uh, uh, so there's no polar have, bear zoos in West Virginia. I mean, there might be polar bears in West Virginia. Uh, there's polar bears in there's polar bears in uh, Philadelphia. There's polar bears in the Bronx Zoo. I don't. There might be there I might mean, be polar bears. I'm anti zoo. <laughs> what are they doing? I'm anti zoo. Well, I, I I would caution on that because the Bronx Zoo has done a lot in terms of like conservation efforts and a big part of zoos nowadays like if it's if it's a ethically run zoo a large part of it is more about exposure and um letting people know that these animals exist in the world um another big part is about reintroduction right so they'll actually run breeding programs for creatures that don't have a high uh wild population and they'll run the breeding programs and then release them into the wild. So if it's a yeah. well, if it's an ethical zoo, it's fine. If it's the Kingston Zoo, <laughs> if it's most zoo, like I can get the 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 breeding and and reintroduction yeah. stuff sorta. There's I don't know, the, the just zoos seem like to- just bummers all the way around. Although I will say that the dollop did turn change my opinion on um on big game hunting legal big game hunting well legal that's yeah, because that's it, the key it turns out that the, the 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 majority of funding for um uh uh like protected areas in africa come from people who show up and pay a lot of money to have someone take them to an animal to shoot so they will be brought to they'll pay like an exorbitant amount of money and be brought to an already sick or lame animal and that's mm-hmm. the one they will shoot and that money will go towards increasing the the protected area for the creatures and ha- spending money on having people be around to protect the remaining animals so that one that th- th- that one they, they they changed my opinion on that so my opinion on that is yes i respect them for their hustle but Screw the people who want to shoot the animals in the first place. Oh, yeah, fuck those guys. But thanks for the money, but fuck those guys. Yeah, I mean, it's perfect. It's, like, the best way to screw them over. So, yeah. Um, additionally, in this story, uh, Cockrell found another individual by the name of Proudfoot in Morgantown, which was downriver. Okay. And supposedly is he that his, saw something. Is that his real name? Or is that, like, was, a, like a he was cool and in a band? I only saw that their name was Mr. Proudfoot. Okay. No first name, no nothing. <laughs> Mr. Proudfoot. Um, so, of course, this new article that uh, was written, it, it triggered even more fervor in the community. Uh, of course. Um, well, I mean, if one article, if one kind of maybe okay article based on the amount they actually had to go on triggered... 20 plus kids with hammers <laughs> to go out into the woods then another yeah. i don't know what the other what did these kids do i mean this is why we need to lock kids in basements with textbooks to really keep them on track or at least give them some pokemon games god damn it Brandon. I, i'm just i'm just remembering really anything but fortnite Oh, God. Well, they're going to dab. You can't stop the kids from dabbing, Brandon. Stop dabbing. You're not even dabbing right. It's because I don't want to hit the microphone. (laughs) 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 To be fair, if you could, if they had dancing in Halo and like dabbing in Halo, you know for a fact that. Every person we knew would have been dabbing as well. We that's what we need games that are easier to break, right? Because there were there was so much time we spent breaking, uh, air quotes breaking Halo, where you like go you go into and then out of the menu, and that lets you see the seam 
in the, the, the geometry on the level, and then you go, okay, so there's a seam running along here, so if I do this and then jump onto that, it'll shoot me into the sky. Right? That was the best part of the game! It literally was, and then they fixed it in the, the anniversary edition. And then they fixed it. Why'd they fix it? I don't know why they <laughs> fixed it. We need games that are easier to, 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 to mess with. Uh oh, they didn't like that. Oh. They didn't like that. It's part of the conspiracy, man. Oh man, corporate overlords don't appreciate us messing with their capital products. Oh, oh wait. Uh, also, I'm I'm getting word. Yeah. Games are still a buggy mess. What? Huh? Anywho, let's go. Uh, let's go talk to management. Let's go talk to management. His name's Todd Howard. Got us again. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Pogo's Pastries. Pogo's Pastries is a small mom and pop bakery known for their killer cookies and their circus clown theme. Simply enter the basement of the house on Somerdale Avenue with the construction worker outside and enter a world that you have never seen before. Eat your heart out, Robert Wonka. These cookies are great and their croissants are to die for. Now back to the show. I like this monster so far. Yeah? Yeah, it, it's um, it's an interesting one. I like, it's one of the first big and smooth monsters, which are two aspects you don't typically see combined together in sightings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean... <sighs> Like, with the exception of uh, uh, water-based monsters. Yeah, so, I mean, I've been... I read this... I, I know the whole story, and I was actually scared that it wasn't going to be that interesting all monster. Yeah? Because that might be the only real sighting of it. But let's, uh... let's, let's keep going into it. Okay. So, the editor that I was mentioning before the break... Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Monte, Go ahead and say this one. Yeah. Uh, Monty Borjali. Borjale? Borjali. Okay. I'll, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Bujali. I, I don't know. It's something French-ish. Uh, I'm going to just be calling him Mont- Monty. <laughs> uh, he, he was skeptical. Ah, he was skeptical, skeptical to say. Oh, man, I am <laughs> so tired. <laughs> was skeptical to say the least. However, monster hunting was the area's most popular sport in recent years. But why? Yeah, why? Why, John? So, uh, Mont believed that the Monty believed that the explosion of pop- popularity was due to a contemporary event happening in Michigan, and that there was literally nothing else to do in the area. <laughs> I take number two. That that one seems more likely. <laughs> That one seems to be the most likely. However, the story, uh, the contemporary event is yeah. like the way that it unfolds is actually very similar to this. Oh, so about a week before June 1964, uh-huh. a rash of sightings hit Cass County, Michigan. Oh, um, okay. It was of this huge hulking thing that matches generally the description of Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Okay, there's a difference. No, there's okay. not. It's just. I meant to say Sasquatch slash, but whenever gotcha. I see a slash, I say or, even well, though <laughs> the uh, the well, I know that the Squatching community they have like these subcategories and differences, whether they be regional or what have you, of these different creatures. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that was like given the region, they thought it could have either been a subcategory called Sasquatch or subcategory called Bigfoot, or if the two are actually interchangeable. That, that I'm not sure. Oh, my God. I'm so not involved in the Sasquatch community. And every time I hear about, like, the different classifications of Sasquatches, mm-hmm. I just... There's a little part of me that dies on the inside. <laughs> uh-huh. Because there's so much effort put into this thing that there's no... There's not a type specimen for it. So there's no point in doing different classifications. You're just... If you're doing classifications for something that you don't have a type specimen for, you're literally just trying to explain variances in descriptions, which more easily can be explained as people just making the shit up. Yeah. Or perhaps <sighs> a broken specter from last episode. 
That too. Yeah. Uh, so according to the sheriff of the region, uh, the sightings were made by good, honest, legitimate people. And it mainly spanned the Sisters Lake area, which is why it's called like the Sister Lake Monster or something along those lines. Okay, another creative um, name. Not another creative name. There were sightings made over the years. However, the 1964 batch of sightings was noteworthy as it triggered a monster mania to the point that they had to, uh, like, block off roads with roadblocks. Oh, blocks. man. That's good. The, because people were bringing hunting rifles into the woods at night. <laughs> and Always a good idea. Here's a spoiler alert. When... People are in the woods at night, and everyone has a hunting rifle. That's not a great thing. No, no, no. <laughs> luckily, luckily, no one got hurt. Oh man. Uh, however, it did create it did kick off a amount of media frenzy to the point yeah. that it reached uh, Grafton. Oh, so okay. The editor surmised that this this frenzy in Grafton might be tied to. The frenzy and Grafton. Okay, I got yeah. you. So, so are they saying that perhaps it could be the Grafton monster, or that they're just somewhat tangentially uh, connected? They're tangentially connected. Gotcha. Like they're parallel. They're parallel yeah. events, and the one is feeding into the other. Okay. Because the monster itself, the description of the monster in Sister yeah. Lakes, did not match at all. It was a big one. Okay, I got you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. The editor then went and did a cursory investigation of what the monster could actually be. Okay. And uh, he found out that someone had been moving a handcart of boxes along Riverside Drive the night of the <laughs> uh, Fantastic. And there was an additional explanation. I don't know if it was the same explanation or yeah. different, just because the the reporting is a little vague. Uh -huh. Um. Local eccentric Betty Conrad was moving a refrigerator at the time. <laughs> I love uh, that she's known as the local eccentric. Yeah. So for people out there who don't know the rough size of American refrigerators in the 1960s in description, they're about seven to nine feet tall, four <laughs> feet wide, and have smooth white finishes. Or just watch Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. Or don't. <laughs> or don't. Um, so, to make things even more wild, uh, Cockrell, in correspondence to Gray Barker, said the following. It is true that someone mistook the boxes for a monster, but I can assure you that's not what I saw. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. So, okay. So, fine, I, Mr. Barker. That, that reads to me, yeah, that did happen, but I'm I'm smarter, so that didn't happen to me. Yeah. So, I'm pretty confident that that's the explanation for this. <laughs> however, uh -huh. however, there are second opinions, additional opinions, oh, rather. Oh, yeah? Uh, the first, and it's not explicitly aimed at the Grafton monster, uh -huh. uh, but at white things in general. Okay. That it's a beast of subterranean origin. Oh, all right. Because it I has like no head. Uh, conceptually, that would mean it has no eyes. Yeah. Slick skin. White white skin means that it could be like albinism or something along those lines. Yeah. However, and this is a big however, things that live underground typically don't hit seven to nine feet in height yeah oh yeah uh for obvious reasons uh there's not really a food supply for something that size to exist no you're even that large moles, right moles yeah. live a, a large portion of their sustenance is like grubs and bugs that live underground and moles um i will say all the moles I have observed to date have not been nine feet big. <laughs> Except for that one irradiated one. But we Except don't talk that about one. that. <laughs> uh, the second hypothesis yeah. was proposed by Gray Barker in the uh, the correspondence he had with Cockrell. Uh-huh. And that's the alien test animal hypothesis. Ooh. 
okay. Meaning that the grafted monster is an alien that was placed on Earth to test if the atmosphere was appropriate for other aliens. I would like to say that I picture a Grey Barker as having a, a very large beard, and that is to say he was not shaving with Occam's razor. That is true. <laughs> uh, I can kind of rebut this one real easy. Yeah. Uh, because in the, the title of this theory, Alien Test Animal Hypothesis. Let me let me underline hypothesis <laughs> like 300 times. Yeah. Yes, it is correct. It is a hypothesis. However, I can create a hypothesis right now that the Grafton monster is uh, me traveling back in time wearing a large box that was painted white. Yeah, I will say I'll give him I will give him one uh, a half cookie point. For okay. saying hypothesis, not theory. Because yes. those are two very different things. And hypothesis Correct. lets you be more loosey-goosey. Well, yeah, because the hypothesis is the starting point. Yeah. That's, it's not the end. It's the starting point, and you need to find evidence to support it. Yep. Hypothesizing something doesn't necessarily... Like, I want to... I'm not saying that he made this hypothesis as though it was fact. Uh -huh. But I am saying that I've seen people take hypotheses, hypotheses, and make them and treat them as fact. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, I I think my opinion is that the Grafton monster is in fact just a refrigerator. Because <laughs> also keep in mind the dude was going fifty miles an hour. Yeah, that's my favorite. Um. Here's what it could have been. <laughs> I think I think it's our best one so far. Of everything. Well, it's either a nine foot tall, pale white monster that can swim, or a fridge. <laughs> I like fridge. Fridge is my favorite. The only thing that I thought when I saw fridge, I was like, oh man, I hope they had that door open just a crack because if oh. it takes too long to move, then it's gonna get that smell and it's never gonna be right. Yeah. Yeah. You can't get that smell out of there. Oh uh -huh. man! So there, there, the Grafton monster has shown up a few times in pop culture. Okay. Uh, obviously, as we said at the top of the episode, in Fallout seventy six, yep, it's a yep, nice. overworld boss. <clears throat> and then, recurring star of the show, <laughs> Mountain oh, Monsters. Yeah. Yes! yes. Had an episode about the Grafton monster. Woo! That's so I watched so this episode. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and I have some notes. <laughs> I hope you do. Oh, man. I'm excited. So first, yeah, they know way too many specifics about the Grafton Monster. Like, <laughs> they stated its weight. Its weight? Its weight. It was like 1,000 some odd pounds. And I'm like, okay. Uh, how'd they get that number? Yeah, bold strategy. Yeah. Uh, the video that they have that is offering proof of the monster uh -huh. is a video of a bunch of like cows walking through the forest. Yeah. And a black, barely visible shape moves in the background. <laughs> so it's black. So first of all, it, it already doesn't match the description of the Grafton monster. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was nowhere near water. So, all the two key points of the Grafton monster are ignored. <laughs> um, it, it they they say, all right, let's do an investigation. They have guns at night. Uh, always a good idea. Almost every single one of them is walking around with guns at night, and all I can think <laughs> is, someone's gonna get shot. <laughs> if the producers were smart, they would have guns but no ammo. Yeah, probably. And have maybe, like, if it's at night and they're in Virginia, maybe, like, another guy off camera who's got, like, bear spray and maybe, like, a, a, a rifle of some sort just for an in case something were yeah. to happen. Yeah. But definitely uh -oh. none of the guys in the show should be, should have live ammo. <laughs> I, I don't think they should have live ammo in the normal sense, but that's a personal opinion. Um, I, I've, uh... Added a picture 
to the uh oh yeah to that's that of... such a quality picture i will say my favorite part of the picture and i hope you mm-hmm. did this on purpose it yep. is for the listener a fleur image which is a um like a thermal picture they spent the money mm-hmm. to get a fleur camera or at least just stole their logo offline and put it in the corner yep. and the temperature uh, of the hot spot in this picture is 69 degrees Ay. Fahrenheit. Ay. <laughs> it would um, appear to be, I don't know, you'll have more context because you've seen it more. Mm-hmm. The picture itself looks to be a person crouching. Uh, it, it's basically the video is someone jumping over a hill. Ah, but okay. it looks like it's literally a person jumping over the hill. Yeah, like the lower, like at the the knees, top or thighs, it's cropped off. Yeah, because yeah. they're literally jumping. They're like walking over a hill. <laughs> uh, there's also trail cam footage of the monster. It looks literally like a bear. Um, and then oh wow, look at that. Yeah, I that basically looks... hit a. Uh, it looks like know. a bear. It, it looks, looks like, a, like bear. a bear. It, it looks... looks fake. It yeah, doesn't that's look like a getting, monster. It doesn't look like a living... It looks like a taxidermy bear or something. Like, it it looks... It does... It does look like someone put a taxidermy bear <laughs> on, like, uh one of those shop carts. Yeah. And just pulled it. Yeah, well, I... I something, something I'm noticing right now is that on the image provided, the ends of the trees, the tips of the tree... The branches appear mm-hmm. they're blurrier so they appear to be moving somewhat more than the bear itself yeah yeah i think it's probably <laughs> yeah so like, i think it's a little blurry but the tree is more blurry than the creature shown yeah <laughs> which is usually clear evidence of bad fakery tom foolery um, yeah yeah so I stopped watching the show at that point <laughs> because I couldn't take any more. Uh-huh. Uh, there's literally no way this show is anything but pure fiction. Oh, no. Yeah. There, there's, like, I actually then did, did some research. And, yeah. like, some of the people are actors. Ames, which is the name of their organization, isn't even run by them. Uh, there, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of fake stuff in that show. Oh, yeah, man. I believe it. 100%. Yeah. As always, our website is cryptopediacast.com. There's a link in the show notes. On Instagram, we're at cryptopediacast. Twitter is at cryptopediacast. Uh, you can email at us at uh, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Uh, our Patreon, uh, there's a link under the Sasquatch on our website. Click the dollar sign. We'll take you there. Uh, we've got some tiers there. One dollar doesn't really get you anything. Get your thanks. Two dollars and up, you get the uh, the show notes, like like our our, our research notes. Five dollars and up, you'll get special content. So yeah, we have the Ballad of Shank Daddy X, which oh yeah, we should have released by now. The second part of it. Um, we're we're talking about doing a Mountain Monsters Rift Track style thing which we'll be giving to our five dollar and up tier members i'm excited for that one yeah we're we we're we're working out the logistics on that still um we'll figure out like how to set that up what what where you should view it all that kind of stuff and we'll get something going for you guys um we've got a facebook group which if you search us on facebook you can just you know follow us there and we have a page and all that good stuff uh if you like the show Rate it, review it, subscribe, share with your friends, all that good good stuff. Um, and then if you have any monster requests, stories, creepypasta, cryptopasta, just send it our way and we'll try and find a way to make it into an episode. Yeah! And if you're interested, you could find me online on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. My Twitter is at crypto brandon capital c capital b um and for me it's at mu 2057 for instagram at jf dunham for twitter my website still defunct john dunham i can guarantee it's still <laughs> defunct when we release this episode 
one hundred percent. My email is John at cookiecast dot com. Uh, and as always, all this is accessible on the website. If you go to our, if you go to the about us section, and then you know, just click those links underneath our names. Our art is done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. He's got four feet wide shoulders, but the most interesting thing is his head drops clear down in the center of his chest. He's kind of hunkered over. We'll only be able to see the head from the side view, guys. They call it the headless whore. Headless whore. W-H-O-R-E whore.